If you're watching this, you might already know about sensitivity analysis. But what is the variogram-based approach to sensitivity analysis? What is unique about variogram and covariogram functions when it comes to sensitivity analysis? What is worse and what is star worse? Hi, I'm Salman Razavi, and in this video, I'm going to respond to those questions. The idea of using variograms and covariograms as a means for global sensitivity analysis was first proposed in 2016 in twin papers that developed a new framework called Variogram Analysis of Response Surfaces, or VARS in short. Before we delve into the theory of VARS, let's recall the most basic way of sensitivity analysis. We change the input and then evaluate the resulting change in the output. But wait, how large or small should the change in the input be? That is typically subjective, and that subjectivity can be harmful in nonlinear problems. Good news is, variograms can help with that. So, what is a variogram, and what does it tell us? Suppose we have a function f that receives input theta and generates output z. The variogram of f denoted by gamma is a function of h, where h here represents the change in the theta space, that is the input space to function f, as follows. Basically, the variogram quantifies the variance of the change in output z as a function of h. And here is what the variogram looks like for our given function. Now, let's consider h of point 2 as an example to better understand what the variogram really represents. If we take a pair of samples from this function that are point 2 units apart, we get a delta in the outputs. And if we take a second pair of samples, the same h apart, we get another value of delta. We can keep on taking more and more pairs of samples with that same h, and then take the variance of all of the deltas to obtain the respective value in the variogram. And what is a covariogram? A covariogram characterizes covariational properties of function f by quantifying the covariance of the output z as a function of h, that is, the change in the input. Covariograms can complement the information contained in the variograms and can be shown on the same plot. Variograms and covariograms are the building blocks of VARS. Now that we know their equations, let's see how we can estimate a variogram. To simplify this estimation, we can make an assumption in statistics called the constant mean or first order stationarity assumption. Using this assumption, we can convert the original variogram equation to a new one that uses the expectation instead of the variance. The term inside the brackets is called the similarity in the VARS framework. Now we can use the new equation instead for the estimation of variograms. But how do we extract the variogram from function f? Let's take, say, 10 samples randomly. Choose a pair of them, say samples 2 and 5. This pair has an h, which is the distance between the two samples in the input space, and a delta, which is the change in output when you move from one sample to the other. This pair gives us a point in the variogram plot. Now, let's choose another pair, say by samples 3 and 4, and map it similarly onto the variogram plot. And then another one by samples 1 and 6. And then another one by samples 1 and 10. We can continue until we have mapped every possible pair onto the variogram plot. From our 10 samples, we get 45 pairs that are basically all possible pairings within our set of 10 samples. 
When we have all those dots, we can estimate the variogram by averaging those dots for different values of h. Now we know the basics. Let's use a simple example to see how Wars uses such variograms for the purpose of sensitivity analysis. Our example here is the butterfly function with only two inputs, theta1 and theta2, and output z. Because we only deal with three dimensions in this example, we can plot the response surface and its contour map. We can also look at the cross sections of the response surface along the input axis to better see the shape of the response surface. From our response surface, we can derive the variogram surface. This example has two inputs, so the variogram also has two inputs, h1 and h2, one representing the change or distance in the direction of theta1 and the other representing that in the direction of theta2. In Wars, what we need is the directional variograms, which are cross sections of the variogram surface. But how do we interpret directional variograms in terms of sensitivity? We have already learned that a variogram along an input direction shows the variance of change in the output, which is basically the rate of variability or sensitivity of the output to that input as a function of h, which can be of any size in the input space. H is actually called the perturbation scale in the VARS framework. Back to our example directional variograms, for small perturbation scales, the sensitivities in both directions look similar. But for larger perturbation scales, the blue direction shows larger sensitivity. And for the largest perturbation scales, Again, the sensitivities in the two directions become fairly equivalent. So what this example tells us, detailed in this paper, is that the sensitivity of something to something else is a perturbation scale dependent concept. Variograms are actually a mathematical construct that can characterize sensitivity across a spectrum of perturbation scales. Such a spectrum of information about sensitivities of the output to variance inputs can be summarized in sensitivity indices. Wars does so by measuring the area under each variogram curve. For our example, the blue area is larger than the red area, so the sensitivity to the blue parameter is higher. Measuring those areas is basically taking the integral of the variograms. Similar to variograms, we can now plot the integrated variograms and assess them. What Wars uses as the sensitivity index is then integrated variograms across a range of scales, or IWARS in short. The user needs to specify the range of interest for integration. For example, IWARS 10 is the integration of variograms from 0 to 10% of the input range. IWARS 30 is from 0 to 30% of the input range. And IWARS 50, which is called the total variogram effect, is from 0 to 50% of the input range. Okay, now we know the theory of VARS. Let's see how we can numerically implement this theory. An efficient implementation of VARS is called Star Wars because it uses a star-based sampling strategy. Star has two parameters, the number of stars and the resolution of sampling. To understand what they are, suppose we have an input space with three inputs, theta1, theta2, and theta3. Let's choose the number of stars to be two, so we get two sample points located randomly in the input space. These points are called star centers. Then we need to get cross-sectional points, all equally spaced delta h apart. Let's take delta h to be 0 
which means 10% of the input range. These cross-sectional points are called star points. The total number of samples can be obtained by this equation, in which n is the number of inputs for a given problem, m is the number of stars chosen by the user, and delta h is the resolution of cross-sectional sampling, which is also chosen by the user. For the example shown here, the number of samples is 56. If you don't know what values to choose for m and delta h in your own problem, our recommendation is to go with the delta h of 0.1 and then choose m such that the total number of samples remains within your computational budget. Many experiments have shown that store wars can generate robust and reliable results with m values as small as 5 or 10. Once you have collected all those samples from your input space and obtained the respective output samples, for example by running a model, WARS can generate a wealth of sensitivity analysis information. Not only does WARS generate the IWARS indices, but it can also estimate classic sensitivity analysis indices based on the derivative and variance-based approaches also called the Morris and Sobel approaches, respectively. Therefore, WARS can be viewed as a unifying theory, generating a spectrum of information on sensitivity. For limiting cases, it reduces to derivative and variance-based approaches. These relationships will be explained in another video. WARS is also highly computationally efficient. Different experiments have shown it is one to two orders of magnitude more efficient than alternative methods because it is based on the information contained in pairs of points rather than in individual points. And we can get so many pairs out of a small number of points. For example, in a two-dimensional space, how many pairs do we get out of five points? All possible pair combinations of one, two, three, four, and five, and they add up to a total of 10 pairs. By adding one more point, we get five new pairs, and now we have 15 pairs in total. The superior efficiency of wars over alternative methods has been demonstrated in independent studies, such as these two. Overall, WARS is able to quite efficiently converge to robust estimates of sensitivity indices, even with small sample sizes. Such efficiency enables you to run a sensitivity analysis on very complex and computationally demanding models. This video was an introduction to the variogram-based approach to sensitivity analysis. Now you may ask how exactly it relates to the classic derivative-based and variance-based approaches to sensitivity analysis. You may also ask what if the inputs are correlated or non-uniformly distributed? Or what if the response of a model that we run the sensitivity analysis on is dynamic and changes with time? In the follow-up videos, we will delve into those questions. Thank you for watching.